talk about stuff is like it's so it's always so profound i'm always like wow i'm always learning like how did you become so brilliant and like and like i feel like i'm like thirty thousand years older than you are and i'm still trying to catch up to your maturity level like how were you always this like spot on like so brilliant where you're like oh it's this um there's a I, it's an interesting first of all thank you um for the compliment um i think there's still a lot of learning i have to do and a lot of growing um but i will tell you that from a very young age um so first my parents involved me in a lot of like adult conversations from a young age not inappropriate adult but they welcomed me to the table um and so when they had friends over i was invited to socialize and so from a very, very, very young age, I've gotten um, just told that I was like wise beyond my years or that just something like that. Um, but um, I, there's also been a lot of learning um, that has come with this. Um, I'm a huge reader. I'm a huge advocate for reading um, physical books. In fact, my computer right now, so that it's at a better place is on like three physical books. Um, I'm, so I'm a really huge fan of that. And then the other thing is, is one of the things I do run is I take feedback um, from myself, from others, um, not usually people who don't know me if they're not in my inner circle I don't invite a lot of outside input but from people who I work with and from people who I really respect I seek feedback um, and then I listen and I write it down and then I work and I just continue to listen and grow and listen and grow and listen and read and grow and but and that's so fun because that's <laughs> and that's not what like I feel like the younger generation, like, like that's not what, like I feel like such an old man right now. I have like, no. I mean, my shit's coming back back here. I've been using uh, hair grow stuff on the back. Yeah, that's so, amazing. I know. It works. It works. Yeah. I And of course, like in true, in true, like my life, like I, my ex-wife told me about this product that is for women. It's called Vigo More, I think. And, and I call it Vigo Morganson. And, uh, and I, and I use it and it's been working for the past three months. So it's like, again, yes. I still, I, you've also lowered your stress levels. I know. Cause we were talking about that before that mm -hmm. I do, I, I have a system. I lost my hair when I had really bad stress. Um, and it, it, this all, this area is always a little small. That's like my cowlick area. It's always like that, but this area, this whole, this whole spot here. And now these pieces, look how long these are. Look at this years because I lost it in about 2017, 2018 was really stressful for me and it retreated all the way back. And um, so it's stress if, yeah, if you find yourself losing yeah. a lot of hair, um, it's a really, really great physical um, like reminder warning sign. Yep. Yeah. To ask yourself, okay, what's going on? What do I need to reevaluate and how do I de-stress my life? See, I want to talk to you about 2017, 2018. So we've talked a lot about this in our work together. Mm -hmm. But like, so you you have your finger on the pulse. Like you are in the thing. Like you are in the industry right now that everybody is like still like five, six years like into this thing, like maybe even 10 years into this thing now. You're a social media goddess, right? And like, <laughs> I always find you so much, like you're so refreshing. You're so smart about it. Um, can, like, how did you evolve into social media? And then we'll talk about 2017, 2018. Like, yeah. how did you evolve into this role? Yeah, I got my start as a digital strategist. Um, and I also got my start in digital sales. So I, right out of college, I was making 100 cold calls a day. Um, and I, <laughs> I remember my boss and he had this script that he wanted me to follow um, for selling some of these digital products. And digital products like Facebook ads, um, SEO, um, websites, all of that. Um, and we were very real, very legitimate company, very good company, but a big, a big component of how we got our business was through cold call sales. And we had the script and he was like, and I told him, I'm like, if I can close three pieces of business using this, can I do whatever I want to do after this? Like, cause I don't want to do this. Um, and so he said, yes. And so after I closed the business, then what I did is I utilized, I was, I've always been a social media, like social butterfly in my, that that's just who I am. It's who my grandma was. Um, it's just who I am. And so I used the power of social media to actually truly connect with people. And so when I would call them, it wouldn't be a cold call anymore, but actually be a warm call. And they would kind of know Amanda. And then I would be able to get the business. I was very successful in that. So I was recruited to other roles. I became a director of digital strategy at a bigger agency here in Reno. Um, and then from there, um, 
everyone was like, you need to go do your own agency. And this was back in 2016. Um, and so we were just, I mean, people were still not fully understanding the full power of social media. I was like, we're already behind. In 2016, I was like, we are already behind. Um, and so I started my social agency then. Um, and our mission, the reason I started in 2016 also was I was so frustrated and I was lamenting, um, which lamenting is my polite word for complaining, by the way. Um, <laughs> um, but I was lamenting to a friend um, about how social media had just like been a dumpster fire because 2016 is when we saw like DT, HC, and like they were, they were just everyone was raging online. And I was like, oh my God, this is so not social. And I was like, why can't we just keep social media social? And now, by the way, you guys, I, I care about, I care about my country. I care about voting. I care about different things, but there's a certain point where it's just not healthy. And so that's and what kind of got me started. Right. Like there's a time and place and there's like, yeah. you're saying, like, like, is this format the best place to like rip each other apart? Like I, you have a thing on that. I mean, you talk a lot yeah. about that, right? Like I do. Yeah. So that's how I got started. That's kind of the background. And then, yeah, we've been operating in business from 2016 until now. Um, which we are about to hit five years in August, and I'm that's amazing. Happy about that. You know, yeah. that's that's huge, man. Like, big congrats to you. And again, like, Thanks. like someone so brilliant, so smart, um, so focused, and like, you created something on your own. Like, that's huge, man. Like, thanks. You're gonna make me blush. That's a lot of flattery, but oh. I. But also, I've been. Can I tell you something I'm working on that I'm reading about right now? Yeah. Because this is a tip for, or maybe a tip, but something for listeners. So I'm listening to a book called The Big Leap. Um, yeah, you like this book? Gay Hendrix, written by Gay yeah. Hendrix. I love this yeah. book. This, this book okay. changed my life, yeah. Okay, so I'm just now consuming it for the first time. And so one of the concepts in there is um, one of the things that we maybe should avoid is deflection. And so you just gave me a very wonderful compliment. A deflection would be like, oh, no, I don't yeah. deserve that. No, you. But yeah. what... Yeah, no, no. But what Guy argues for is rather than me deflecting, me saying, wow, Ron, thank you. And thank you. And letting, because you, it's a transmission of energy. You just transferred me some good energy. So I can say, wow, thank you, Ron. I appreciate that. And then what that does is that allows that energy to live in me. And then I can not you, but use, do you know what I mean? Like I can yeah. use that. So I'm practicing not deflecting. So thank you well, for that compliment. Thank you. Because this is actually, what a great lead into the question. My next question is like, you know, do you, like with this idea that, uh, you know, with deflection being kind of one-sided where you're like not receiving and not going back and forth, like you said, energy exchange, do you feel like that is what a big part of the misnomer is about social media where people think it is just a one one way street like a one way conversation and that yeah. is what led like like because you talk about sales and social you, you said sales as a result of social media it was like you were building the relationship it was back and forth and then you close the deal you feel like a lot of people think it should be just i'm going to say i'm out here and then five thousand people are going to buy from me or you know what i mean yeah, let's unpack this because we could go this in a few directions. We could go this in the business direction. We could also go this in the personal direction. And I want to take it both. So from a business direction, I 100% think that many people think they can just get online, put up effectively a post-it note. Do you know what I mean? Because like it's a post. It's one post. <laughs> like it's basically a post-it note. Um, I mean, it's more strategic than that. And there's more work that goes into it. I know we run a social media agency, but, and then they expect the floodgates to open. And that's just not, it's just not how life works. It's not how business works. And I think a lot of times when, when we see people use social media in that way from a business standpoint or from a political standpoint, we'll see people, I was just talking to someone in Reno who's going, um, who's a mayoral candidate in 2022. And I was just giving her a little bit of um, free advice. Um, and one of the biggest things that I see businesses and politicians and frankly, even influencers get wrong is that they, only put up, put up, put up, put up about what they do, what they think, 
or what they want to say. And we saw that in a big way in 2021. We saw that in a big way for a period of a presidency. But I think what is so incredible about the social media tools, no matter the platform, is the power that you can have to listen. And I think the brands, the businesses, the political people, and just the people in general who can utilize social media not only to speak their agenda, but also to listen to their community or their constituents or their classmates. I think those are the people who are really keeping social media social. 100%, that makes so much sense. And I think um, like, I'm gonna, I'm, gonna t- I'm gonna nerd out right now. I'm gonna be totally Let's nerdy. I'm gonna totally nerd out. Um, ah, I wish I had glasses to push up. I know, right? Um, yeah, like you see it. Um, you see it a lot in the in the movie studios, in the film studios now, where um, like Warner Brothers, Disney is a big one of it. Like, like they will they will course correct like mid production of a film based on what fans are saying. Um, like we see it in the Superman and Batman movies. Like we saw it in Star Wars. Like so interesting. Yeah, like the most recent Star Wars movie that came out was so reactionary. It was like a Frankenstein of a movie because it was like it was like they they heard from like the fans were unhappy with the movie that came out two years earlier. So they completely just like they put in everything that they were reading basically, and it was like this yeah. Frankenstein movie. So it's like it is interesting how I mean that like those are extreme examples, but it is interesting yeah. how how companies, big companies, are like having their like ear to the grindstone. Is that the term? Like. They're like listening. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, that is interesting, and I think that also raises a really interesting point because I think you're right; those are extremes. You know, on one hand, we've got you know I don't listen to anyone; I only put out what I want to put out. And on one hand, you know I take feedback from everyone, and I think you know even thinking about that creative process, I think that can be very challenging because I do think as leaders, in there are leaders in every area of the world, right, including the movie industry. Um, I do think that there is a certain point where, you know, you, you listen, you listen, you listen, and you still need to do what it is that you feel called to do. Um, and you need to honor yourself and you need to honor that process. And so I think that's an interesting extreme. And I, I think that's a really good example of how we can do it right. And I would, I would bet that there's some people who said, well, the quality of the movie was drastically changed because of all the feedback. And so I think it's going to be a really interesting balance. I also think that's what leaders are going to need to do in this age and beyond to continue to be good leaders. Because if you are going to be someone who only takes input from other people and just gets pushed and pushed and pushed, I mean, you're going to get pushed everywhere because right now everyone has no, everyone has a different opinion of how things should go or what things should do or what's good or what's bad or what's what's what so i i do want to also say there's a limit and everybody has a forum now to speak about it right and they, there's an entitlement like if i oh my gosh yeah. right like like no matter where you are on the spectrum of you know politics or views like everything is so divided that everyone feels like oh well i have the forum forum so i'm going to speak my mind right like mm-hmm. it's it's yeah. uh like I, I saw recently, um, Seth Rogen, Seth, not Seth Rogen, Joe Rogan. Joe not, Rogan. Yeah. I Joe really Rogan. like Seth Rogan though. <laughs> I know. I like them both. But Have yeah. they talked? Have they gotten together? If they haven't, they should. I know they're like, that'd be awesome. I would actually listen to that one, but I would want, I actually want Seth Rogan to interview Joe Rogan. I don't want Joe Rogan to do most of the talking. I want Seth Rogan to. I don't know that I can handle Seth Rogan. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I don't. It's like too much, like Beavis for me. You know, do you ever watch Beavis and Butthead back in the day? Like I don't. I did it. That was a few years before me. That was before your time. Yeah, they should have. They should have Seth Rogen play him. Um, but uh, but Seth or Joe Rogan. I keep saying Seth. Joe Rogan. He recently like he there was a a whole stink about his views about the vaccine. He's like, if you're healthy, you don't need the vaccine. And then I just saw another interview with him or where he spoke, and he's like. He fully is like, he's like, I don't know. He's like, I'm a fucking comic. He's like, I say shit. Like, it's not always true. Like, get over it. He's like, I, I don't know what I'm talking about half the time, you know? So I love that he was that transparent about it. And so, <clears throat> like, but it's just funny how everything now is so heightened. You know, do you feel that, like, has this notion of, like, A, thinking that you have a forum and a right and entitlement to say everything that you think under the sun, whenever you think it, no matter what, 
do you think that like influencers, like real good influencers, are are better about it? Like, are they better about straddling the line and finding the balance? Or like, what makes a really good influencer? I guess that's my question. Is because I got so many people emailing me like, hey, this person, or like, hey, I really want to be a, a an inst- I want to be Insta famous, or I want to be YouTube famous, or whatever. You know, like what? How, yeah. What like that be so we're saying you know like sensitive being like a listener, but also how do you become an influencer at this point? I think that's a big thing for people. Um, thank you for opening this topic. Um, this is definitely a topic, and there's a few questions in there. So let me share kind of one by one. You know, I I don't love the word influencer. Um, in fact, I actually like if you get a drink in me and you get me off off this recording, I will be like. I fucking hate that. <laughs> and obviously I'm here, I'm in my blazer. Like we're having a professional conversation. So I'm gonna answer this in a professional way, but I have some very strong opinions about this. I don't love the word influencer because the word influencer is a term that the advertising and marketing industry created. And now we've got tons and tons of people and kids who want to be influencers. Cause who doesn't want influence? But you know, the reason I don't love the word influencer is because the word influencer really pulls on a lot of ego and it really supersizes people's egos. And it also makes people feel like they need to be bigger than who they are to be worthy, to be valuable, to be enough. And I think we've seen the rise of some people to be so big online and to have so much influence that they do have some power and some control and doors are open for them that might not be open for someone with less followers. And so I can understand the pull, but this actually does tie back into 2017, 2018. So I'm gonna just bring this into my story quickly and then I'll go back. Um, Around that time, Oh, you can take your time. You can take your time. This is all about you. Yeah, yeah. I'm with you. Okay. I'll tell, I'll tell, I'm going to tell a story now because, and then I'm going to come back. Um, Around that time, I just started my business. Um, You know, I lived in Reno, Nevada and Reno is the biggest little city in the world. And they call it that because it is, everyone knows everyone's business here. And so there's like a rate there. It felt like there was a race to the top and I got super sucked into it. I, I did. I, and I was growing followers. I was, and my ego was growing with it. Um, it was, um, I was 25 years old. So, I mean, I was like hot to trot. Okay. Um, and I just got so focused on people knowing who I was, knowing what I was doing, knowing what I was all about, that like I really got entrenched in that. And that supersized my ego. And that was not healthy for me because then I had to keep playing catch up with the size of my ego. And it was, I never felt good enough. I never felt like I was making enough money. I never felt like I had smart enough things to say. And I always I just, because I, because also my ego had gotten so big, it was just complicated. And also I felt like I had to be putting on a show when I went on social media. It wasn't that I could just be Amanda. It was, I had to be Amanda McLaren. Like, and that's exhausting. And that's partly exhausting because it was fun for a little while. And then I went through a pretty intense breakup Um, I left a five-year relationship where I thought I was going to be engaged. Um, I was financially unstable and I was living in Denver. I was paying $1,400 a month for a 450 square foot studio. I couldn't really afford that, but I needed to be, I also didn't have a car. So I needed to be downtown, like near downtown. And at the same time, I'm here projecting myself as this amazing businesswoman who's got this amazing company. And by the way, my company is great, but I personally was struggling. I was, um, I was struggling to feed myself properly and have proper rest and nutrition. I was so lonely. Um, and I, but I had to keep, but I also, at the same time, I was trying to level up. And so what I chose to do was I, I chose to share that story. I was not 
even looking back and friends now remind me and they're like, Amanda, you are not lying about any of this. Like you shared this, but I don't, again, I was just so used to sharing, but now looking back, I'm like, what was my intention for sharing all of that? Do you know what I mean? And it was kind of sharing the journey, but bringing it back to the influencer thing, I think people can get into such a routine of wanting to share their life. When you're, when you're an influencer, you are the product. You are selling the product. You are selling your story. You are selling yourself. You are selling your body. You are selling your image. And you know who else sells their body and their image? Porn, celebrities, athletes. And when we look at people who sell their body and sell their image, a lot of people can be very, very happy. And that's, and by the way, I have nothing against that, but I think a lot of people don't always understand the challenges that come with that. Because when you are the product, when you are the service, when you are that, you have to be that every day. Well, there, and it there gets used, really hard. I'm, I love that you brought up those three other, cause like there used to be, even, even in porn, I think there was, there's, there's a barrier, of, bar, there was and is a barrier to entry. There's an audition process. There's a vetting process. Um, yeah. Like, you know, I just know like with, with showbiz, like, right, like you, you have to go learn your craft. Like, you, and I, th mm -hmm. like, I'm not being silly, but like porn, obviously, like athletics, like you have to work your way up to professional athletics, yep. right? Yep. And I think with social media and like with YouTube stars, like my niece, um, she's obsessed, like she just watches TikTok and YouTube all day. And she, like, she looks at like these crazy, annoying, high, strong, like high pitch, uh, TikTok videos where people like these kids are just screaming their faces off and like jumping off of things like at the same way that we would look at like Eddie Murphy or you know Richard Pryor or whatever as like these genius comedians she just sees like these like it, like it's just such a different level where there's no barrier of entry these are 14 year old kids with with phones making millions right so there's there it's just like you have this medium it just it just happens so that like it's like I don't, I don't want to say it's not earned because they're they're creating content that, that sells but right, there isn't that shift. There isn't that like plying their craft, right? There isn't that shift. Well, and there's a preparedness. You know what I mean? If you're going to be a professional athlete, you know what's in store for you. You also know the salary that's going to come with that. So you can afford physical therapy, mental therapy, um, training. When you, even, even many celebrities, do you know what I mean? There's different training and they have a different lifestyle because they get, shit on do you know what I mean frankly do you know what I mean like they get that and for everyday people who are showing up online ready to be that influencer or wanting to be that well yeah we all want the love we all want the attention but what about when the double-edged side of that sword comes out and now you are getting all of the hate all of the judgment all of the negative feedback because by the way influencers do oh my gosh they do and are you emotionally prepared to do with that? And then the final thing in this, and, and then I'm gonna kind of seal up my point here. What I learned, there's not money, in, there's not there's not all of that much money in being an influencer. You know, anyone who you see who is a huge influencer usually has another line of business going on and they're making their income through that, truly just making your money through influencing or getting paid for advertisements it's not a steady revenue stream and it is incredibly incredibly difficult to make that a full-time paying job and right now the myth that's out there right now is that this is just easy money it's easy money people are getting rich on youtube people are getting rich on this can you fall into some of that sometimes yeah it's happened however it's not always a healthy path to take and if there's anyone listening to this who either is wanting to be an influencer or who has um, a friend or a family member who wants to be an influencer. My message is this, I own a social media agency. I pay influencers all the time. Even the amount that we pay them, the amount that we work with them, it would need to take so much work to get to a living salary 
Whereas you could go and you could make 40, 50, 60 grand a year doing something that you actually enjoy doing from a career perspective. And then maybe you do something on the side and maybe you have fun with it. Um, but the final kind of the final point is for me is because I was trying to influence, trying to, what am I trying to influence for? And also transparently, should I be influencing right now? I had to have a really heart to heart, hard conversation with myself because I was not at the healthiest point in my life. I was not physically, mentally, emotionally, all of it. I was just not there. And I was still showing up online every single day. And I was burying my soul. And I was like, this is, you know, a friend kind of pulled me aside and she gave me some hard feedback. And she's like, you're sharing all of yourself with people who have not earned all of you. And it was, it just was not healthy. And what I realized is that what I wanted to be all along was a leader. I've always wanted to be a leader. I grew up in 4-H. I grew up uh, in high school and college leading on boards and on other things. I've always loved to lead, but I got to tell you what, influencing is not leading. There's a huge difference between a leader and an influencer. And you can be both. And that's really powerful. So you, your one of your original questions was who makes the best influencers? Good leaders. You know, there's a there's a few business CEOs out there who I follow now who have a pretty good following. It's not just business CEOs. You know, it might be there's 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 tons of different types of leaders. But I think who makes the best influencers are leaders. And I think who makes the best influencers are people out there doing real work. You know, you know who I think is one of uh, just a phenomenal human being, phenomenal influencer, Michelle Obama. Michelle is a wonderful leader, and she leads with empathy. She leads with kindness. She she is very thoughtful before she speaks. She's very thoughtful as she writes. She's powerful. If you've ever read well. or consumed, yeah. she's very powerful. Yeah. And and to anyone listening to this who maybe has been um, not very close to Michelle because of political beliefs, I would very much encourage you to just go consume some of her work from a non-political stance. She talks, Michelle is very, very open for saying she does not like politics. She never did. Like she didn't, you know. Like, know. She's friends with George W. Bush. It's the cutest thing. It makes me so it's happy. It's the cutest thing. She is, but I, that she is a good influencer because Michelle is a good leader. And she's someone who thinks before they speak. And that's something that I had to learn growing up because that's what I, I got a lot of that wrong when I was a little bit younger than I am now. And it's something I've been very intentionally fo focusing on over the last few years is truly breathing, meditating, thinking before I speak. And I think right now there's a whole lot of people on the internet who are not choosing to do that. And I think it's creating a lot of digital pollution. So then a hundred percent. And, and, and I love, and this is, this is what I love about your social media focus and bent and, and spin and all that. Like, this is why, like, uh, I, I think people should just work with you because like you, you don't come at it from like, we always joke like, Oh, just hire a 15 year old to post for you. And they know this thing better than anyone. Right No, I'm like hire Amanda McClernand because like you have such a kind spirit about it and you get the other side of it. So what do you, how do you guys work with people now? Like in your business, like where yeah. you say, keep media social, like social media social, like how do you keep it social? Yeah. Like, <laughs> I love when yeah. you do that. So there's a few ways that you can work with us. Um, and I'm going to talk about a few of them actually, if you don't mind. Um, so the number one way is, so we are a social media agency. We work with brands and we work with businesses. We do work with brands and businesses of multiple different sizes because we have different packages that work for them. I am a huge fan of small business. Um, so I do still want to be able to support them. However, very transparently, um, delegating your social media is expensive. It's not cheap and it's not, it's not always the right decision for many, many small business owners. I know that because I've done this for five years. Um, so the number one way to work with us that anyone can work with us is through our two hour um, intensive strategy sessions. We also have a package of three two hour blocks. Um, so if you just, if you're actually, if you're pretty good at social, but you need some high level, big picture 
strategic planning to our intensive, that's $500. And depending on how much social you're doing, we, we recommend either one time a year, twice a year, or quarterly um, for that type of planning. You'll get feedback, you'll get next steps, you'll get um, training. I mean, we can do a lot in the two hours. That's also really good for if you have absolutely no idea what you're doing on social media um, and you need help and you need a plan, we can do that. One of the things that we do in that session is determine how you are going to continue to do social media. Is this something you should delegate and pay $1,500, $2,000, $2,500 a month to delegate? Or does that not make financial sense for your business? So you, what you need to do is hire someone internally, but this is not their only role. They have a few other pieces and get them some training, which is also something we offer and provide. So the strategy and consulting is for everyone. We do offer full service um, social media, like delegation, if you will, like you can delegate your social media to us. Our minimum is 1500 a month. And we range right now anywhere between $1,500 a month and about $6,000 a month. Now, the $6,000 is huge. Those are really big companies doing all sorts of influencers, all sorts of advertising, all sorts of campaigns. So that's not everyone. But I really do want people to understand the range of what we're looking at in terms of how intense social media campaigns can be. Now, that's through the agency. The other cool thing that we do is we provide classes, training, workshops through Keep Social Media Social. We also publish a social media magazine that you can subscribe to um, so that you can learn from us just and we'll arrive on your doorstep. We do not publish this digitally. It is only physical and we're very excited about it. I got mine yesterday. Um, I got mine yesterday yay. and I'm like, oh my God, I love Amanda McLernan so much. Yes, it's awesome. Well, it's pretty amazing because it's pretty amazing to do hybrid business, both in the digital world and in the physical world. And that's important to us. And it's really important. You know, I said, I'm a huge fan. One of my core values is literacy. And it is really, really impactful and important to get offline and take some time to read and to write. And those are skills that can need to be continued to develop or we will lose them. Truly, I mean, I know I say that, but truly, if we don't continue as adults to invest in those activities and use our brain in those ways, we will go soft in those ways. So that's one of the reasons we publish this is because it's a core value and we want to promote literacy. So that's, that's exciting. And then the uh, final thing. Oh, sorry. Yeah. You're, you're so inspirational. Oh, I like talking to you. I want to, I want to, I want to do TikTok now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you can do whatever I do whatever you want. Be I don't inspired. Know. I, I legit I like I don't know why I mean like legit like talking, I'm like, yeah, it's possible. <laughs> like I It's possible. <laughs> well, and it can be fun. Um, it really can be fun and it should be fun. Um, social media should be fun. That is the goal here. Um, so the final thing that I would love to say um is so through Keep Social Media Social, when we do our events and our classes and our workshops, some of that is very much hands-on teaching about social media, social media marketing, all of that. But we are growing and expanding and we've been working on something really, really big. And that is our GTFO. And it doesn't stand for what you think it might stand for. It stands for get to freedom online by getting off. This is... Um, this is a class that we've developed right now. We're offering it only in one hour sessions, but we will be offering full workshops very soon. And it's all about getting to freedom online. And I've worked over the last few years because I unwound myself from my unhealthy relationship with social media. Cause in 2017, 2018, I was pretty, I was spending about 14 hours a day on screens with between my computer, my TV, and my phone. And that's a lot of time. Um, that's a lot of time. And I was doing work, I was doing ongoing education, and I was doing um, socialization. And when the digital world is your source for all of those things, 
um, you can get pretty lonely, even though you feel very connected, you can be pretty disconnected. And that's what we're seeing right now in our country and in our world. So we are really working with people to help them get offline. This is a program that is available. It's, it's ready to go. The talk is ready. We can be brought into high schools. We can be brought into corporate wellness programs. We can be brought, we can be brought into churches. We can be brought into any organization who feels that their group of people is spending so much time online and maybe they just need a little bit of help thinking about how we can get off. And so it's, and it's a really, really tactical talk too. It involves, it does involve science, it involves the way that these tools impact our brain, it involves red flags and what to look out for in ourselves and in members of our, our close family. And there's tactical, actual solutions for setting boundaries with the digital world to get offline. And then when we're offline, there's tactical steps to re-engage with ourselves first, then the physical world, the outside world, and others. And so that's, um, I feel so honored to be called to this mission. And I do truly feel called to this mission. I feel honored that I got to walk my path so that I could give this, because I don't think I could give this if I hadn't walked it. Um, and this, I'm very passionate about this. So if any of our listeners or if any of our viewers um, want to talk about this and bring me in as a speaker, um, we are available. This is finished. I am so proud of it. Um, and for anyone listening, when are you publishing this, Ron? Uh, probably in, uh, a few weeks after we record it. Okay, perfect. Then then also they can continue to come back to keepsocialmediasocial.com um, and go to our events page to see when we are also offering this because we continue to offer this on our own too. So if you're an individual and you're like, oh great, I definitely want that talk, but I don't know who to bring this in as a group, come to keepsocialmediasocial.com, go to the events page and you'll see when we are offering GTFO and you can you can get it through us. That's awesome. And I, I've seen the speech many times. It's awesome. You give yes. such so much value. So like, yes, please, please do well, this. Thank you. Well, and a big speech. shout out to you because, um, yeah, uh, we'll, I deflected. We'll, I deflected. Yeah. You see that? Sorry. Yeah, thank you. I did. I did. Here, thank let you. me, it's my turn. So I have been working with Ron for the last year as one of my speaking coaches. I've been doing about three hours of speech coaching and training a week. Ron has been with me on that journey. Ron has really helped bring this GTFO keynote to life. He's given me incredible feedback. Um, you are absolutely one of my favorite speaking coaches that I've worked with um, because of the way that you lift up your clients and you really believe in the people that you work with. So if anyone has watched this and they want to speak or they want to be, maybe they don't want to do a keynote, but they want to be a better speaker in their business or in their, you know, they just want to be a better communicator. I have learned so much from working with you. So I would highly recommend Mr. Ron. Thanks, Amanda. Thank you so much. I adore you. I love working with you. And it's true. I like the yeah. people I enjoy working with. Like I, um, yeah, I don't, I, I don't work with everyone. I always say that. Like, it's like, I don't, I really don't at this point. Uh, so yeah, like you were one of the people I just like, oh, I will run that walk. So thank you so much. Um, yeah, finally, final you. question. How do people get a hold of you? Yeah, absolutely. Well, so if you're interested in um, our agency work, so two-hour intensive um, or a three-pack of those two-hour intensives um, or potentially delegating your social media to us, please visit mclernanandco.com. That's M-C-L-E-R-N-O-N-A-N-D-C-O.com. Um, or you can shoot me an email at Amanda at mclernanandco.com spelled the same way. Um, if you're interested in GTFO or if you're interested in anything that we've got going on from an education standpoint, um, or you want us to bring in to talk to your work, um, whether it be about social media and a social media training session or um, a GTFO keynote session, um, you can visit keepsocialmediasocial.com. Um, or you can just email me. I gave you my email and that's always the best way to just go straight to the inbox. I would love to connect with anyone who has um, really just felt anything during this conversation and felt like the message needs to continue to um, expand.
because I, I really do feel just like a channel for this message. I feel very grateful um, to be the channel for this message, but this is not about me. This is about the mission and the message. And I do think it's time that it gets out there. Oh, I love, I, you're just the best. I mean, I know you said it's not about you, but I'm just like, you are the best. I just adore you. Like, Amanda, thank you so much for your Thanks, time Ryan. today. I just, yeah, virtual hug. Oh. Virtual hug. Yeah. I can feel it. It feels so good.